the FFV of payments. Today we look at statistical analysis, specifically a chi-square. So here's our equation. We're going to do the observed minus the expected squared over the expected, and then we're going to do the summation of all of our different values. So the certain species of plant where purple is dominant to the yellow, they do a, a cross between them in which they get 156 seeds. 92 of them are purple, 64 of them are yellow. We want to do a chi-square on this to determine if the flower, um, the purple flower, was heterozygous. And we want to give our answers to the nearest tenth. So what we're first going to do is our Punnett square. We're going to cross the yellow plant with the purple plant with the purple being heterozygous. That gives us 50% purple and 50% are going to be yellow. Um, I have a little underline here that denotes that it's a lowercase letter. I always tell my students that if it's a lowercase letter that looks the same as a capital letter, to put that line underneath it and that will kind of help to differentiate between a, a capital and a lowercase letter. So what, based on our uh, question, it tells us that 92 of them are going to be purple and 64 of them are going to be yellow. So it gives us a total of 156. So if I wanted to figure out my expected, I go back to my Punnett square. 50% of them will be purple. So 156 divided by 2, or 156 times 1 half, is going to give me 78. And the same thing for my yellow. 50% of them would be yellow. So 156 times um, 0.5, or 156 divided by 2, or times 1 half, however you want to do the math, will give us 78. So if we sub it then into our question, okay, so we have 72 minus 78 squared divided by 78. So it's my observed minus my expected over my expected. And then I do my observed minus my expected. So 64 minus 78 squared over 78. So if we do this math, 72 minus 70, I'm sorry, 92 minus 78 gives me 14. 64 minus 78 gives me negative 14. If I square that, I get 196. And I'll take each of those and divide by 78. Give me 2.51 plus 2.51. Give me a grand total of 5.02. It does tell me I need to give my answer to the nearest tenth, so I'm going to round that to 5.0. Now, I don't actually use this formula when I do the math with my students. I use this chart. And so in the chart, I set it up where I've got my different um, groups there, where I've got the purple or the yellow. Um, I put my observed, I put my expected, and then I know that I take this column minus this column. So observed minus expected gives me 14 and negative 14. I square that, giving 196. And then I divide by my expected, so this column divided by this column, and that gives me the exact same value. So if you wanted to analyze this to determine are you going to accept or reject that null, um, you're going to look at a degree of freedom of one, which I realize I'm about to have the wrong thing here. <laughs> um, and our p-value is going to be 0 0.05, so we're going to say that 3.84. Um, and so since 5.0 is greater than 3.84, I'm going to reject my null hypothesis that this is not going to be a heterozygous uh, purple flower. <laughs> so go ahead and pause the video, see if you can do this question. Um, you're not going to have to do a pun square on this one, but um, just see if you can do this question. So we have a pea plant. Smooth is dominant to wrinkled. Purple is dominant to white. And the dihybrid cross where is a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So they've already given us our expected ratio. The following data is collected. So they tell us how many are smooth purple, um, smooth white, wrinkled and purple, wrinkled and white. And they want us to get a chi-square square value and then give us it to the nearest hundredth. So I'm going to do with the table value just because it makes more sense than my brain. So um, because of the fact that I know that it is a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, I'm going to say, okay, well, 9 sixteenths of them are going to be smooth and purple. So the total number I have is 429. If I take 223 plus 84 plus 89 plus 33, that gives me 429. I take that value and I multiply by 9 over 16, which gives me 2.41313. OK, you're probably wondering why I have so many decimal places in my chart. I go one decimal place past wherever I have to round you. So since I have to round to the hundreds place, I want to have each of these rounded to the thousands place to decrease my amount of rounding error that I'll have. So then in order to find my smooth white, I'm going to say, OK, 429 times 3 over 16 will give me 80.438. And then I'll do the same thing here. Wrinkled in purple is going to be 3 16 So 429 times 3 16 gives me 80.438. And then for my last one is 1 16 So 429 times 1 16 which is going to give me 26.813. If you want to confirm that your values are correct, you could add this up and it should give you the same number as your expect. I'm sorry, your observed. 
So we then do observe minus expected, and it's going to give me each of my values. So 18.313, uh, 3.56, 8.56, 6.13, 6 I'm going to square each of these values, give me 305.366, 12.688, uh, 73.308. 38.279, and then I'll take this column and I'll divide by my expected, um, which is going to give me 1.390, 0 0.158, 0 0.911, and 1.428. The last step is that I have to add them all together, giving me 3.887. Now, I'm not done because I do have to round it to the nearest hundredths, so 3.887 will round to 3.89. Hope this is helpful. Remember, a 5 was just assessment.